I'm quite well connected in Europe when it comes to ELF. I probably know someone on each team, maybe maybe two, maybe zero on it, some teams. You know, some of them are not as well connected. Um, but Paris is one of the teams I know a couple of people on. And when they signed Florian LaRose, I was really, really excited. I messaged some people that I knew on the team. I was like, you know, this guy's fucking good. Like, you got to seriously start giving him a look. And they didn't. The first few games, he was, he got, he had four targets in four games. And I, I messaged these people in the organization. And I was like, you got to get him the fucking ball. <laughs> like, this guy's unreal. Like, he caught a touchdown against Cologne in the first game. And I was like, yes, this is the arrival of the Rose. Next few games, nothing. One game, he had, like, nothing at all. He had two targets, no catches. And I said to the people I knew in Paris, I was like, get this guy the fucking ball as soon as fucking possible. Three games in, after those four-game stretch, so game five, six, and seven, they give him the ball, and he goes off. And he shows that, in my opinion, he's the next anti Mahomwu. He's six foot three, 220 pounds, athletic, long frame, huge catch radius, and he is going to be uh, really hard to keep if he breaks out. When he breaks out, I think he's going to break out this year. Didn't have as much success with injuries as he did last season with the slow start. Gets into it, gets injured. I think that when this season comes to an end in 2024, and if I'm correct in my prediction that Florian LaRose goes off, I think that we're going to have quite a lot of teams looking at him for eSports because he's a game changer. He's only in his mid-20s and I think that he is already really, really close. And look at a French receiver called it. Antoine Mahonu, they got LaRose, they got Remy Bertolon. That's three really good fucking players. And they got people like Sal, got Kevin Wambo coming out of tight end. Like, just a stacked offense. And he is, with Antoine Mahonu, the two best players in that receiver core. And I think that with Antoine Mahonu, he's is now 30. Uh, he's an exit receiver. But we're not sure how many years he potentially has left. LaRose is absolutely going to fill that spot. I think that he's fantastic, and he's going to be who we look at today. We're just going to go straight into it. Some of the best hands in the league, especially for a European. He catches so many balls that he isn't really meant to. He will have a DB draped on him, and he's still going to come down the ball. Contested catches, deep balls, short routes, intermediate routes. He hangs on. There is a slight caveat, though. Sometimes he will take his eyes off the ball a little early. Maybe it's a lack of concentration. Maybe he thinks he's already secured the catch. But he'll drop a couple of balls every now and then it was only a few instances and a few games that he uh really played in but i think now that he's developed more as a receiver after one year in paris i think that that will be less of an issue his route running is also technically proficient it's not the most bursty like he his release isn't phenomenal it's pretty decent but it's not elite and his burst in and out of his breaks isn't elite either but what he does run is run pretty sharp routes and he gets to where he needs to go. And he can find space and coverage pretty well in the scrambles as well. Because one thing Paris did quite a lot on offense. It was scramble because of the average to poor offensive line play. When he gets the ball in his hands though. He is a fucking dog. Like he's going for these yards. Like they're the last yards of his life. Like his life depends on these yards. He's going for it. Like he's so hyper aggressive with the ball in his hands. He never goes down easy. He'll try and carry three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten defenders with him if it means getting an extra yard. And I think to have a receiver that wants the ball and wants the yards is incredibly valuable. And it's not, it sounds ridiculous, but a lot of receivers go down easy, man. Like they really do. He's not one of those guys. He's got such a big frame that it's just hard to really get him down. And with his catch radius and those great hands. What really more can you do? Incredibly hard to bring down. Incredibly aggressive. Great hands. Good route runner. And a diverse route tree. Florian Rose is going to be a huge part of this offense going forward. The physicality displays also kind of comes into press coverage, right? DB comes to try and hit him onto line, try and disrupt him. He's a little bit more inconsistent. He's not quite as... His hands for disrupting press coverage aren't great. But his physicality and his... His size means he can get through these these smaller DBs. So in terms of his hand technique, he does need some some practice. But the tools are absolutely there for him to be an elite press destructor. When it comes to his speed as well, like he has an extra gear. Some of these balls, they're coming a little bit low. Zach didn't have the, the arm 
or the, maybe the distance that he wanted to. The Rose is open on some of these plays because of that next gear that you can hit. And it's another rare factor you don't see in receivers very often. It's just being able to hit that next gear and track that ball. He can track the ball. He has great hand-eye coordination. And I think that he is one of the most underrated and not talked about receivers in Europe. Because he only really played three games at 12. They got injured straight after uh, the seventh game against the right fire. Of course, he's not a perfect receiver. I think his blocking could be vastly improved. I think that the play speed is pretty low. The hand positioning is fairly poor, and he doesn't really care as much about the blocking as someone like Harlan Quofi, who was the best blocker receiving in Europe. Like I said earlier as well, the burst in and out of breaks could use some work, I think, just in terms of dropping his center of gravity and just exploding out, out of it a little bit more, would be majorly beneficial to his development as a wide receiver. He does play all, all outside too. He's a perimeter guy. He's not going to come into the slot. He'll sometimes be the lead player in a bunch. Is that slot, like, I know it's categorized as that, but quite often he'll come outside anyway. So I don't consider that to be much of a, a slot guy. More importantly than a lot of these factors on scheme and quarterback and offensive line is Antti Mahonwu is going to take up a spot on the, probably the American. And then Mitchell's probably going to be in a slot. Austin Mitchell, the dress, the former dress and speedster, probably going to be in the slot, and the Rose is going to be on the other side of the of the perimeter, which means he's going to be on a European DB. And if a European DB thinks they can cover Florian Rose, I'm sorry, that European is going to have a long day. There are not very many Europeans that I would trust consistently to put on Florian Rose. Marcelo Beard is on his team. That's probably the only one that matches him lengthwise. Apart from that, maybe Tony Allen can deal with him lengthwise. I'm not sure, sure. Maybe not. That's like the only real European I can think of that's going to be able to match up with him and, and meet him physically is maybe Tony Anderson at the Ryan Fire. But if you manage to put him on, on Mohanwu as well, he's going to get open. He's going to create separation. He's going to burn a lot of people. And I think that Florian LaRose is in for an incredible season. I don't see a way other than injuries or a poor scheme. So I kind of do see a way. If it's injuries or poor scheme, he goes under 500 yards. If he has a good scheme and, and, and Zach Edwards sees him early and gets his momentum building up, he could go to 800 to 1,000. I honestly think that much of Florian LaRose. And he's one of my favorite receivers in Europe. And I think that coming into this year, a lot of people can have to share that sentiment. But this was a super enjoyable film study to watch from a fan point of view and as an analyst point of view. I'm going to probably do a different... I've done DBs, done receivers. I'm not sure who to do next, but I'll, I'll do something. I'll find someone. You know, I have a lot of... I have a lot of names. About 800 to 1,000 players on my scouting charts I want to get into. Um, will all of them get a video? Probably not. <laughs> Because it takes about eight nine hours to um to get all this just the tape and then cutting up the tape, getting rid of the audio, putting these tapes in. So it takes a while. But if you hear this song, much appreciated as always. These uh, videos are always the most fun for me to make. It's not about the views. It's about me getting my scout work up. I actually have an evaluation of Rose uh, written uh, on my Quofi where all my scouting boards are. If you're interested in any players in Europe, then just you know hit me up on my Instagram or my uh my twitter but yeah this is great much appreciate everyone thank you very much and uh goodbye <laughs>